Hey folks, this is Jake here at Canadian Cutting Edge, and today we've got a first impressions and assembly video for the Hapstone K1. This is their most budget-friendly uh, sharpening system that they make that has a rotating clamp system, so it's easy to sharpen both sides at exactly the same angle. So stay tuned, this video won't be long, but uh, you'll get a good little feeling for this sharpening system, and then I'll do a full review later on probably in a couple weeks. I will do a first impressions video and assembly video on their R1 system, which is a little more pricey than this one, probably within the next eight or nine days. We'll see. With the long weekend coming up, things are shuffling around a fair bit. Stay tuned. Okay, so here's everything that comes with the knife. You've got these stones. I haven't unpacked them yet, but they're easy enough just to you just push sideways, break the seal. Now, it comes five different ways. If you get it with the lowest price, you're going to get these three stones. These are just silicon carbide. Uh, F220, F400, and F1200 grit, but you can get different stones that cost more that are better. If you know you're going to upgrade your stones from these very basic ones, why not do that when you buy it and you'll save some money and there's no sense in getting these if you don't want these, if you want something else, right? So there's these basic stones. You get these two tools here. You get a Allen key and you got a nice Torx screwdriver. Uh, this one's the perfect size for sharp tightening and untightening the uh, clamps to hold your blade. This tool is used to assemble your rod. So you get this arm and you get this extension rod and you get this collet here to put them back to put them together. So as Tighten this collet onto the first section, so just put halfway in. It will be tightened on one side. I forget if it came on this end or if that collet came on this piece. It doesn't really matter which one it comes on. So I just am going to tighten this back up here. Don't over tighten. Rule number one. So many guys, especially when they're novice with these kinds of things, they over tighten screws. If you need to tighten it some more, if you find that's coming loose, yeah, sure, tighten it some more. But if you over tighten it, you run other risks of wrecking things. Basically, there you go. When it's tightened all up, and it goes in here, very simply, you've got this universal pivot point here with a nylon bushing in there. And you just stick it in, and you're good to go. It's got this little catch here, and I'll show you from a top-down view how that works. It just hangs on like that, unless it shows really good in this view. So just that's all it does. That's for when it's at rest. Now you can adjust this pivot, I mean this arm for the stone holder. So yes, this thing will hold KME stones, no problem. You can, you can put a one-inch stone if you wanted to in there. So whatever length stone you want, you put it in there. I was off camera for a chunk of this explanation, so I'll explain it now. So here's the rod assembled, and if this is in the right spot, uh, this uh, adjusts for the size or length of the stone that you're going to use. Uh, usually, if it's right at the end there, that's your basic size for your basic stone, the ones that come with the uh, half stone or the mini, mini of them, the six inch stone basically fits right in there. You adjust, I mean, yeah, you loosen it and tighten it with this. You just pull back on this spring to remove the stone. You know, put a new stone in and you let go. Now, both these parts, you know, can pivot sideways while it turns. Uh, if you loosen this, you can turn as well. So you have to make sure that these are, you know, parallel with one another. Now, if you have a shorter stone, you just bring it down here. 
I'm just assuming that this end is right. If that if that end is seated with the spring, then you bring this, you know, about a quarter of an inch past, maybe three eighths, tighten it up, and then you're able to get it in place. Stones that have square ends instead of having this little angle cut in them right there, that'll work just fine in here as well. They'll just uh, gri grip it with, uh, you know, the flat part there instead of the little notch. Works just fine either way. You can even use plain stones that don't have a backing at all. I just don't recommend it because you're putting extra stress on the stone when it's being squeezed. Then, uh, you know, that's just a personal thing of, of mine. I prefer having stones with a backing. Now, if you spend a little bit extra, and I am going to recommend you spend some extra and get the second clamp. The first clamp just sits in the middle all by itself right there. Um, I do wish it was just a little bit wider. If it was another quarter inch bigger and eighth on either side, that would be beautiful. Uh, but this stone can be put on either side and can be put fairly close to the middle all the way out to the other edges. And um, the extra money that this costs is very highly recommended. And uh, you know, if you can afford two of them, well, then you're starting to get diminishing returns. It can be good to get two of them, but uh, you don't really need two of them. So it's just a thumb screw on there, and you push this back and you just tighten up the thumb screw. And I'm not going to put it fully tight because when you loosen it up, you can then slide it over to wherever you're going to need it, and then you tighten it down. And that's the assembly. And the how-to, I'm going to do another video on how to use it, how to use these clamps. But basically, I've done it, I've used other stones that fit, and I've sharpened a few knives on this. I really like this. The detent for the pivot, you can change the strength of that detent by adjusting this screw here. So that's a really good thing if you need it stronger or not. Now, it is fairly low to the table, so if you are close to... Uh, if you're not over the edge of the table and you've got something long, you might have to pivot it one way and then pivot back the other way instead of just being able to pivot it, you know, all the way around each time. If you've got a longer knife, especially, you'll have to do that. Now, one more thing. Oh, I didn't tighten that up good enough. There you go. My mistake. I need to put that in better. I didn't get it right in the middle, but that's besides the point for me right now. I make mistakes, too. Uh, what was my point? Ah, the feet. It comes with these feet in this position in the box. And I like them basically straight out to the sides. And then you can use the screwdriver that comes with the unit to snug them down. You don't need to make the screws very tight, just snug them down a bit. And, you know, then they're out like this. Now, some people might want them a little bit like that. But if you put them straight to the sides... Uh, that's the most stable uh, position you can put them in. So it's very stable side to side. It's very stable, stable up and down that way and adjustable. So that's quite good. I like this quite a lot. This setup is very convenient for if you're traveling a fair bit. Um, I'll probably be taking this one with me this summer when I go visit my family because they always want me to sharpen their knives and stuff. Nice small package. Uh, easy to carry, easy to take... Uh, anywhere you want. Um, the room that takes up space is, you know, all your stones. By the way, you also get this permanent marker that comes with it, if you hadn't seen my introductory video. And the permanent marker is really good for just marking the cutting edge. And then you take your stone and you slide your stone over the cutting edge to help find the angle if you want to match the angle. I do recommend that you buy a digital uh digital angle finder. I will show you in the how to use this video, which will be the how to and review video, how to use a digital angle finder. It works well. I totally recommend this. If it's within your budget, that's great. If you've got more money to play with, I am 100% convinced that I'm going to be recommending the R1 even more. I've played with the R1 as much as I have played with this K1. So if you've got more money to spend, and you like this basic kind of setup, uh, that one's going to be even better. It's got wider clamps, uh, more versatile, can handle larger knives. You know, that's about it for this. So stay tuned to my channel for the how-to and full reviews of the new Hapstone systems that have come out recently. Also, 
if you're going to be in, in Atlanta in the beginning of June for Blade Show, I will be there with Gridomatic and Hapstone. Uh, they share a booth uh, because those two companies are related. And I'll be showing people how to use these systems and talking about, you know, Hapstone and Gridomatic stones. I'd really like to see you there. And just before I end, you know, I will put measurements of different things, of different parts of this on the screen when I do the, uh, actually I should do that here. Uh, the length of this is, you know, just under seven inches. The total width, if you're using that whole width, is about eight and a half inches. The height of this unit is seven or eight inches. Six and a half inches up to here, six and a half inches to the top here. So it's a nice compact device, easy to use, easy to take along. Very compact, easy to use system. Thanks for watching my videos. Thanks for sharing them with your friends, liking, commenting, subscribing. And remember guys, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb.